What's up, Get Better Basketball community? I'm Coach DeMarco, and this is Focused. In the Get Better Basketball chat, or hashtag GBetBBChat on Twitter last week, we talked about post play and getting the ball inside. I promised everyone that I would share one of my favorite plays to get the ball inside in my next episode of Focused. So here it is. This is a play that I call Rip which is a fancy word for back screen, and BC. The original name of the play was just BC for back cuts when we used it, and there's a lot of different variations off it. So Rip BC is a great play that you can use with your team to get the ball inside, and it's especially useful if you love to use back screens, which is something that I love to use because they're really tough to defend. Before we jump into this great play, make sure you show some love and hit that like button, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put out new great content each and every week, and the more subscribers I get, the more videos I'm posting. Make sure you subscribe. Now, let's check out RIP BC. RIP BC is part of a series that we use with our team, and it's something that's great in the half court, or you can even use it as a secondary as one is bringing the ball up the floor, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Today, I'm going to take you through the basic play, and then a little wrinkle that you can run off of that basic play, and in the coming weeks, I'll take you through other plays in this series um, that all have similar actions to them. You're going to notice a four-out setup because we were a dribble drive team. And you're going to notice I have the five down here. And a dribble drive offense, it's actually the four player. But most teams refer to this or their post player as their five. Really simple action to get this started. As one's bringing the ball up the floor, that five player is going to come up here. And there's our rip or our back screen. And they're going to set a back screen. I can't tell you how many times this first cut with this player. Now, they could cut this way, but I used to like them to set up their defender and then work right off the screen, shoulder to shoulder. Their defender would think that maybe they're going off to this side, but they would actually cut right through the paint, and there was times in a secondary situation we came down and hit this player right away. You also could have this five pop afterwards and hit them for an open scoring opportunity. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to have our two player cut through. And we'll say that they didn't get the ball. And then we have our five player up here. Right after our five screens for our two. We're going to have two. Set what looks like a little flex screen here for three. And five is going to come and set a little bit of a wide pin down. Four is going to work their defender down. And they're going to come off this pin down. And our three is going to come off this flex cut. But they're going to stop right there at the block. Two is then going to pop back out to the corner. So we could hit this player off the wide pin. We could hit this player off that little flex cut. Or there's times where we'll go across and then get a quick sail inside and a quick pass inside. So these are all options. You can see every movement, there's a lot of different options. Right now, we're going to say that the pass goes through to the four player and across. Our five has come low, and we're going to leave them there in this sequence. And then we're going to have our three come up and set a back screen for one, who's going to cut through the paint, certainly could hit them, and they're going to make an exit cut off of five to the opposite side. Four could certainly hit them in the paint. They could hit them in the corner. Or one of the options that's really great off of this play, really simple, is for four to go over to three. We're going to put our one over here in the corner. And if you notice, we're back in our dribble drive setup. We have our basic four out setup. We have our five player back down there in the paint. And what I like to do is after four passes over to three is have them just make a little brush cut and now set a little double gap there for three to make a drive into the paint. So a lot of times you'll hit those other options, 
but it's okay if you get to this at the end with this pass across and this brush screen. You've had them defend all different types of back screens and pin downs, and now you get back into your dribble drive to finish it off. It's a really great set and one that will work awesome for your team. Let me take you through a little bit of an advancement to this same sequence. Before I take you into how to advance this play and add a little wrinkle to it, that first sequence was great for our team. It's something we used for a lot of years, and we just ran that sequence. In ATO situations, we would add this wrinkle that includes a flex cut to this first sequence. This isn't necessarily a different play as much as it is a wrinkle to that first play. You certainly could designate it as a separate play. I know you're going to love it, so let's check it out. I'm going to take you through the first part of the action for Rip BC with our little wrinkle here. Uh, really, really simply because it's going to be the same. Five is going to back screen for two. Who's going to cut down to the block. As we talked about before, we're going to have two on the block. We're going to have five up here. Four is going to walk their man down. Five is going to come down, set a, a little bit of a wide pin for our four. And our two is going to screen for our three who's going to flex cut. And then they're going to get ready to come up and set a back screen. But for right now, we're going to put our two in the corner. We're going to put our three down here. And this time, and here's part of the wrinkle, after five screens, they're going to work back out to the corner. This is similar to what you're going to see teams do in the flex offense. So we're going to get a pass from one over to four. Our three is going to back screen for one. I really like this because now you open up the paint down here uh, for this pass, which oftentimes is there. We could certainly make that pass down into the paint. If not, really, really simple. We're going to go from four over to three. We have our one down here. And here's our flex wrinkle on the RIP BC series. And then our five is going to flex cut through. We're going to get a screen down. After that flex cut through, and I like this, it's a post. Maybe you get a switch and they get a nice scoring opportunity. And we're going to get a down screen. And we're going to get our one player coming back up. And very similar to the last time, on this pass across to the one, it certainly could be a great shooting opportunity or... It could be a pass across, little brush cut, and open up that gap. We get a nice relocation here, and we get our four to pop back out to the corner. So this is a nice wrinkle ATO situation at a flex cut ending to the RIP BC series. This is one of my favorite sequences that I use in all my years coaching. It was really tough for coaches to defend those back cuts. And if they switched off them, we added in a wrinkle like that flex ending that would get our center with a mismatch underneath the basket. Teams had to decide, are we going to switch three different back screens or are we going to fight through them and maybe give up an open scoring opportunity? Switching one back screen is one thing, but doing it multiple times is a lot harder in a possession, and we would catch teams either by hitting a player open for a three-pointer or getting a scoring opportunity inside. If you like this play, make sure you hit that like button below, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great content each and every week. I'm really looking forward to getting up to a thousand subscribers so I can start to go live on YouTube with great videos and allow the Get Better Basketball community to interact. Also, leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from the Get Better Basketball community. Let me know what you think of this play or certainly ask any questions that you might have. As always, get better every day. Also want to thank a great partner in Dr. Dish Basketball. Dr. Dish has the latest, greatest, state-of-the-art, all-purpose shooting machine. If you've not invested in a Dr. Dish shooting machine, then you have not invested in becoming a better shooter. Mention the Get Better Basketball chat or hashtag GBetBBChat for up to $300 off 
select Dr. Dish shooting machines. Don't miss out on this great opportunity.